All right, I'm going to work um, self review 10 4, um, which is a machine set to fill small bottles with nine grams of medicine. We have a sample of eight bottles, and we're given the sample uh, measurements in for each bottle, and we need to test at the 0 0.01 significance level, which is a 99%. We're looking to say, can we conclude the mean weight is less than 9.0 grams? So, number one, first thing I'm going to do is state the null and the alternative hypothesis. All right, so the question says, um, can we conclude that the mean weight is less than 9 grams? Since we're trying to conclude that the mean weight is less than 9 grams, we're trying to conclude, right? So conclude means that my alternative is going to be it's less than 9 grams. Remember I said before that your null hypothesis would always have the equals to, and that between the null and the alternative, we're always going to have all possibilities. And there are only two possibilities, greater than and equal to or less than. So we have the null as the mean is greater than or equal to 9 grams. What we are trying to conclude or hypothesize or test is H1, which is the mu is less than 9.0 grams. The next thing the question asks is how many degrees of freedom? Well, remember that degrees of freedom are simply n minus 1. The problem tells us we have eight observations in the sample, so 8 minus 1 is 7. So what I know now is that I have 7 degrees of freedom. So I have 7 degrees of freedom found by simply saying n minus 1, 8 minus 1 equals 7. Now I'm going to determine in part C the decision rule, which requires me to compute my test statistic as well as locate the critical value or rejection region inside of the curve. Since we have a sample and we're dealing with degrees of freedom, we do not have a population standard deviation. All they've given us is sample data. We know that we're required now to use the t-statistic, which is going to simply be x bar minus mu divided by the standard deviation of the sample, divided by the square root of n. The key to this problem is, is you are not given x bar, you're not given s, standard deviation of the sample. You have to calculate both of those values before you can proceed with calculating your t-score, coming over here and using your degrees of freedom, and determining what your critical area or critical value within side of your curve is. So, I determined my x bar by simply coming up with 70.4. I came up with that by adding all of the individual sample observations together. I had a total of 8. 70.4 divided by 8 gives me an x bar value of 8.8. .8. .8. Now, I need to calculate the standard deviation of the sample. So, I'm going to calculate the standard deviation of the sample to be 0.22677. I'm going to round that to 0 0.2268. I've done that by simply applying the formula for the standard deviation of a sample that's way back in the, ba in the very beginning of your textbook. Um, I think that some of you wanted to see that calculation, so I'm going to give you a brief shot of what that looked like. So what you'll see real quick is that here are my individual x values. I've added them together and gotten 70.40, which is how I came up with the mean, which divided it by 8. In this column here, I've taken x minus mu. This column, I've taken x minus mu and squared it to come up with the sum, to come up with 0 0.36. 0 0.36 divided by 7, because remember the formula says n minus 1, gives me 0. 0.0514, which is the variance. Remember, I need the standard deviation, which is the square root, which gives me 0 0.2267785, which is the number that I had on the previous sheet that I've simply rounded up. So now all I've done is I've come back here, back up here to my T, and I've simply dropped my values in. 
8.8, .8, which is the calculated sample mean, minus 9, which is the, the mean of the entire population, which was given in the problem. 0.2268, which was my calculated value for S, the standard deviation, divided by the square root of 8. What that ends up giving me is it ends up giving me a T value of negative 2.4. And this negative 2.494 is what I'm going to head into the table and look up right now. All right, so what I've ended up with now are two different values. One is the location of my critical or rejection region based on a T value of 2.494, or actually a T value with seven degrees of freedom for a one tail test and an alpha equal to 0 0.01. The other value that I have is what is the value that I calculated, which is this negative 2.494. Because even though this is a one-tailed test, I go back up here, see where my alternative hypothesis is. Look at the direction that that arrow is pointing. I know that I'm dealing with this lower tail of the curve. So I'm going to test at this one tail on this lower tail of the, of the curve, and I'm now going to make a decision by looking at where these two values fall relative to one another on the curve. All right, so what do we have? What have I located? I've located right here on my curve, this is my value, this is my rejection region, right? This is my negative 2.99. Now I'm going to locate my calculated number of 2.4994, which is going to fall to the right. So this is where my 2.4494, boy that's horrible looking, falls here. Remember this was the rejection region since my calculated test statistic falls outside of the critical value, my decision is do not reject HO, do not reject HO. There is not enough evidence to support the hypothesis, to support the hypothesis that the mean quantity is less than 9.0 grams. So now that I have made my decision about accepting or, or rejecting or not rejecting. Remember, because my calculated value fell outside, fell outside of this critical region right here, my decision was not to reject HO. Now what the problem asked me to do is to calculate the p-value. All right, so I'll show you how I've done that. First thing I did was I located the area under the curve associated with this T of 2.49, which is what I got from right here, right? The next thing I did was I found that area in the normal curve table as 0.4936, exactly the way that we did in the others. I've now subtracted that from 0.50 to come up with 0.0064. Since the p-value is less than 0 0.10, we do not reject on a general basis, but in this instance, since my p-value is less than my level of significance of, whoops, of 0 0.01, I do not reject. Remember, if the p-value generally is larger than your level of significance, then we would reject. Um, in this case, it is less than 0 0.01. All of that p all that p-value really is, ladies and gentlemen, is it's the probability of finding a value that lies, in this case, to the left of that point on the curve. And so the area that falls to the left of a z-score of 2.494, which is right there, is simply looking up this value in the table, 
subtracting it from 0 0.50 in order to isolate this area right here and then saying my p-value is a do not reject for two reasons. One, it's less than 0 0.10. Two, it's less than the level of significance at which I'm testing, which is a 0 0.10. All the p-value is is simply a confirmation, a double check that I have made the correct decision, have not committed a type 1 error, and that my decision to not reject the null hypothesis is accurate.